hello I hope you're well welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video which is more anticipated releases for 2022 I do these videos quarterly so I will link the one that I did at the very beginning of the year for the books that came out in January February and March those books I think all of them that I talked about are now available at your local bookstore but today's videos are about another handful of books um, more like two handfuls I think it's ten books that are coming out in April May and June and I have a variety of books here fiction and nonfiction but I will say that there is a definite like theme or pattern with the nonfiction books that I'm interested in so I must be going through some sort of phase I don't know what that phase says about me to be quite honest you can be the judge of that once I get to those books but why don't we dive right in the first book that I want to talk about is the 16 trees of the psalm by Lars Miting and this book had a lot of buzzwords for me the first the most obvious one for me was me mentioning the psalm because that just let me know that this book was going to be about world war one and honestly i've noticed in the last year 18 months maybe that i'm definitely being drawn to world war one stories perhaps even a little bit more than i am currently for world war two i think with world war two because the market is so saturated i've become a little bit more picky about the books that i'm interested in reading set in that time period but right now i am going through a phase where world war one in particular interests me so that was one thing that caught my attention this is also a work in translation and my subscribers know that I love reading translated works. This is translated from Norwegian and the author, if I remember rightly, is like a bestseller. So that was also interesting to me. Um, and then the other like buzzword for this book for me is that it seems to be a family saga and it spans around a century and I really dig family sagas that have like this sweeping narrative across sort of an extended period of time because when they're done well they are fabulous in my book and this is one that it looks like it's partly set in Norway, partly set in the Shetland Islands, and then partly set in France on the Somme. And so I am just really, really curious about this. There seems to be a mystery involved that the main character is trying to figure out and somehow it connects all of these things together. I am very interested in seeing how those connections work, to be quite honest, because I don't, I don't see it <laughs> from the description, but there's a lot going on here that certainly speaks to me. And there were these words that were just so, so haunting in the synopsis or the little blurb that I saw talking about the 16 walnut trees that are like colored by poison gas and that just gave me chills so i definitely want to pick up a copy of this because it sounds like something that is really right up my alley the next book is the anatomy of torture by ron e hasner and this got me because it sounded really provocative and I am what my mother calls a ghoul when I'm in Europe and I'm visiting all of these castles and these medieval places I love to go into the dungeon and like check out all the like torture devices and things I don't know why it has always really really fascinated me and so this book definitely piqued my interest but what I liked about it is that it seems to be looking at the Spanish Inquisition and going through those archives and all the like gory details that the scribes wrote down about their cold-blooded torture and then it's trying to use that as the lens through which to look at like modern day torture and it posed this really provocative question about the quote-unquote morality of torture and whether torture actually works so i i it definitely got my attention it sounds like it could potentially be 
very divisive depending on what side of the debate on torture certain people fall on. Um, but the Spanish Inquisition angle definitely was unique to me and I'm here for it. The next book is one that I know I'm going to butcher both the title and the author's name. I've listened to it repeatedly, um, but my tongue is just constantly tripping over it. The book is called Keikiai by Vaish Vaishnavi Patel. And this cover, it's just stunning in my opinion, that pop of color that this was definitely one that I was scrolling <laughs> and the cover made me pause. But this is so interesting to me because it's compared to Circe by Madeline Miller, um, which was a five star read for me in 2021. So that comp definitely piqued my interest, got me curious, but this time it is about a queen from the Indian saga, the Ramayana. And so this is a culture, this is a story that I know zero about. I can't even say I know a little about. I really don't know anything. And so the comp to Circe, the cultural references and learning about a different culture and this other saga just really is my cup of tea right now. It also, from what I saw, she starts out as a princess, but she becomes a warrior and a diplomat and a queen. So it sounds like this is going to be one of those like epic stories of a like badass woman and I can get behind that for sure. Um, I also think that at this point, there are so many Greek retellings out there that are either published or going to be published in the near future. And don't get me wrong, I'm interested in almost all of them, but it is nice to see that there are some other stories about different cultures now that seem to be getting a moment as well because of this interest in mythology. So this definitely sounds like a good one. The next book is Shadows of Berlin by David R. Gillum. And this book is on my radar because I've actually read another book by this author called City of Women years and years ago that was set during World War II in Berlin and is all about sort of the women who are left behind by their husbands, their brothers, etc and sort of all the stuff that's going on in a city that is largely populated by women at this point because able-bodied men are at the front. Um, and I really enjoyed it. This is one of these books that even though it's probably been close to a decade since I read it, I still think about it from time to time. I can still visualize the cover. So when I saw that this was a book by the same author. I definitely wanted to make sure it stayed on my radar. This is a book that is set in New York City during the 1950s. The main character has fled Europe in the wave of displaced Jews from World War II, and she's trying to like escape the pain and ravages of war. I'm assuming that the book is about her not actually being able to evade that but it does sound like it's going to be really interesting. I love the fact that it's set in New York, considering I'm a New Yorker. I like that it's set post-World War II and hoping that there'll be a little bit more about society at that time. And it just sounds like it's going to be really, really interesting. So keeping my eye on that one. The next book is a little bit different for me because it is a graphic novel. I read a few of them a year, but I am very, very selective, very, very picky about the ones that I read. I tend to prefer nonfiction graphic novels than I do fiction. I don't know why. Um, but this one was kind of following my trend of being interested in World War One. It's called Stretcher Bearers by Reed and Ryan Beeman. So this book is about a unit of stretcher bearers in World War One. These are men who are risking their lives to go and retrieve the men who have fallen in battle and bring them to medical attention and triage. 
And I think it's going to be very much about the bond that forms between these men under these really difficult, stressful, dangerous, and potentially fatal like situations. And considering that I am reading the Pat Barker trilogy, which is also about men who are impacted by World War One, I, I feel like this would be a nice companion maybe, but I am very interested in the fact that the chosen medium for this was a graphic novel. So yeah. The next book is another nonfiction title. It is The Fairy Tellers by Nicholas Jubber. And this is a book that really has me intrigued. So fairy tales. When I think fairy tales, I think Hans Christian Andersen, I think the Brothers Grimm, I think most people in the quote unquote Western world, Western civilization, connect fairy tales with those types of individuals. So what's interesting about this book is it's looking at the complicated relationship between sort of these European fairy tales and their source materials, which oftentimes were from India and from China and other parts of the world that don't get accredited for being the originators, the sources of these fairy tales that were kind of co-opted and transformed into what many of us consider the original versions of them today. So this is going to be really interesting to me. I don't know much about this subject. Like I said, most of what I know about fairy tales are what I read from Hans Christian Andersen and saw adapted by like Disney movies and things like that. So this one is something that just, it seems very different from everything else that I've read. So I do like that. I am attracted to that. The next book is The People's Princess by Flora Harding. I will just say I am that basic bitch who loves anything about the British royal family. But when it comes to Princess Diana, the people's princess, there she definitely has a place of honor in this household. I mean, my mother literally has this like crystal, not crystal, this like glass ornament of Princess Diana that always has to go in a pride of place on the Christmas tree every year. She is obsessed with Diana. I am just obsessed with the royal family and watch every single like movie, TV show, etc. about them. Um, and so this, this, as much as it's like, I, I can't take it seriously, because it's pure fiction. It appealed to me. Like I said, I am basic. <laughs> so sue me. Um, but this is about Princess Diana after the engagement to Prince Charles has been announced. She's living in Buckingham Palace. She is the future Princess of Wales. She is waiting for her wedding day, that fairy tale day that millions upon millions watched on TV at the time. And, you know, there's tension with the courtiers, with the royal family. Things are not that fairy tale that everyone wanted to believe. And she happens to stumble upon this diary of another Princess of Wales, Charlotte, and she sees parallels between their lives. And so it seems like it's going to be about her reading that diary, discovering this individual, and also foreshadowing some of the tension and problems that later led to the sort of tragic end to that fairy tale, quote unquote fairy tale. I'm using air quotes a lot today. I, I don't know why. But yeah, although it's pure fiction, <laughs> this is not one of those historical fiction books where you try to say that it's thoroughly researched. It's kind of a cotton candy read, but it definitely got my attention. The next book is Been There, Done That by Rachel Feltman. And okay, I admit it. I am 12. It's a book about sex and I I want it. So what I liked about this is that it's a science writer who is looking at the outlandish history of sex, like the stigmas, the myths, and using that lens to look at like 
present day misconceptions and I guess attitudes towards sex itself. The like blurbs all talk about this being really humorous which you gotta love funny science writing because it's not easy to pull off so I really want to get my hands on this one. The cover is also just just funny. Um, I should probably censor it maybe but I'm not gonna. Um, <laughs> so yeah this is this is 12 year old me being like hee 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 sex. Um, but yeah, I, I am very, very curious about this one. The next book is The History of the World Through Body Parts by Kathy and Ross Petrus. And so this is what I'm talking about, <laughs> where I'm definitely in some sort of mood, because quite a few of these nonfiction books that I'm interested in are like about the body or treatment of the body, um, bodily functions, that sort of thing. And this is no exception. It's looking at the like history of individual body parts and kind of painting this vivid history of their significance like things like Anne Boleyn's heart and the way the Aztecs pierced their lips and stuff like that. Those were two examples that they gave. I've read a few books like this um, that are kind of these strange, I guess, micro histories. I, the one that comes to mind is Severed, which was about severed heads and beheaded heads and stuff like that. Beheaded heads and severed heads are the same thing. Severed heads and like shrunken heads was what I was referring to and that sort of thing. And I really enjoyed it, although it was a bit weird, a bit creepy. Um, so this seems to just be like looking at a more encompassing like like a more holistic approach to the body, not just the head. Um, so I do think that I will really, really enjoy this. And yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about it. And the last book is The Scent of Burnt Flowers by Blitz Bazawali. And this is an interesting book to me because it's about this couple, this black couple, in the south somewhere who I believe they accidentally murder someone but because of whatever happened they decide that they need to flee and so they flee and go to Ghana where the husband has a friend who happens to be the embattled president of Ghana at the time and I'm ensuing a lot of drama a lot of political chaos happened as a result. So what really interested me about this book was that the backdrop is the civil rights movement here in the US, but there's also this mythology of post-colonial West Africa that is involved. And that that's something that after reading A Girl is a Body of Water, which also had some sort of African mythology and folklore kind of woven into it. It's something that I'm interested in, something that I want to get my hands on a little bit more readily than I have in the past. So I felt like this would be an interesting book. So I do really think that this will be a book that I enjoy. So yeah, those are 10 of my most anticipated releases for the next few months. A good mix of fiction and nonfiction and books on a variety of subjects and topics and the like that really are indicative of kind of what I'm interested in at the moment, where my, where I want to spend my intellectual capital, as it were. I don't know what I'm saying, but you know what I'm saying, I'm sure. But anyway, let me know if any of these books are of interest to you, if there are some that you're going to be pre-ordering or putting on your TBR. If there are any books that you're interested in that I haven't spoken about, leave them in the comment section because I'm always looking for book recommendations and so are the people that watch my videos. So share the wealth. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe because it helps this little channel grow and it means the world to me. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will see you next time. Bye.